All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Doing another video here on the educational series. I wanted to get this video done a week or two ago, but uh, trying to get the website set up, it's really consumed a lot of my time, and I just haven't had time to get to it. But um, this one I feel is very important, especially around this time of the year. Now, this video is obviously on volume and the importance of it. And really, my belief, volume is one of the most overlooked indicators that traders often miss or, or um, completely ignore in their analysis. Um, so I'm going to really just break down uh, how I use volume to basically spot you know, false rallies or uh, false breakouts and, um, and as well as uh, validate breakouts or validate bottoms and tops in resistance and support. So um, just first off here, so we're in the month of August right now as I'm doing this video, it's uh, Sunday night, so um, August 22nd. And if you notice, really, in the summertime, and I talk about, you guys know this, I talk about this all the time, in the summertime, uh, it's not the time that you want to be aggressive as a, uh, an active trader. And you, obviously, you don't want to be aggressively shorting. Why is that? Because the volume is generally very light. There's not a lot of market, market participation. Um, institutions like to take extra time off around this time of the year. And institutions are the ones that move the markets. So without the volatility, you're not going to be as successful as a trader. You ask any day trader, when's the time? What's the best time to trade? It's 9:30 to 11. That's when the volume is. So uh, I say that because, as you can see here, you look at uh, June of last year. Um, you know we had some volatility. Um, dips were bought, and then volume just dried right up as we rallied higher. Now institutions weren't really buying uh, the market as it it rose. I mean, maybe a little bit just to support it, but they had already bought the dip and they're just kind of riding this out, letting retail, letting the dumb money go in and buy uh, and, and essentially just make them money uh, until they go in and sell. And the same thing here, you know, you have these uh, dip, you know, you have these dip in February, dip in March. Here's where the volume is and um, that's where it was defended. And then you see, you know, volume really decrease over the summer with the exceptions of these little periods of volatility before options expiration. And I hear all the time on Twitter, YouTube, everywhere, oh, this is going to be the next uh, next big move in the market, this, that, and the other thing. And we're in the middle of August, and, you know, there's 33 million shares being traded on the SPY, uh, even including after hours. And it's like, no, it's not. There's not going to be a move. And, and I see people just make this mistake all the time. They're just not analyzing volume. They're not analyzing market participation. And um, so in this video, I'm just going to show you a few examples of how to analyze that and um, really... Uh, how to use it to your advantage. Uh, so first off here, I'm just going to go over a trade that uh, we actually took not that long ago. So uh, we're going to zoom here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And um, we took the trade right here. We had this uh, three bottoming tails in a row on the 50 moving average. But that was one part of the trade here. What the uh, second part of the trade here was, notice the volume here. So we had a nice, nice move up here um, into the 400 handle. Pulled back really straight into the 50 moving average. Yeah, so that 100 uh, sloping underneath it. So there's support here, and you also have uh, this consolidation level. So essentially, it's a back test of the breakout. Perfect, perfect setup, and you've got huge volume on this test candle. And then you repeated it again, little test candle again the next day, decent volume as well. And on the third candle, we entered there. Uh, that told me that someone was defending this area. You have this previous back test here about the 350 area, 50 moving average, straight pullback in an uptrend, and the three tails with the volume told me this is probably a high, high percentage trade. Uh, we entered in on the close and we took 14% on this very recently. And uh, we got out just about at 401 or 402 um, on this uh, little fake breakout. But regardless, Point is, we knew to enter this trade because of the volume that came in on this dip. It's told you, even though this was a red day, there was buyers stepping in and defending the price. As you can see, we had a hammer candle and then one, two, three in a row, and that was your buy signal, and we had a nice thrust higher. So there's one example there. Another one, uh, again, another recent trade is on Snowflake. So this one's really good here. So um, Snowflake is a SPAC, but you know, Obviously had the uh, big blow off move here, and then you know traded down, traded down, found a bottom, pull up. Then you consolidated, so you had to consolidate to get through all this red here, right? So you consolidate, consolidate, and then what happens here? Start huge volume increase. 
So a nice, nice thick green bar here. And then we just pulled back inside of that. And we gapped down below the green bar, closed above it. I love when stocks do that. And we just kind of chopped, grinding back up. And then here was our entry on the close here. Little test candle and passed the test, closed back above the 200, and then we thrust it higher. But the volume here, the volume is why I took this trade. Not just because it was a great inside bar, not just because of this test candle, but the volume that tells you the institutional money is in the trade. Institutional money is wanting this higher. Now, here, again, this happened on Friday. We had a lot of institutional volume on Friday. Um, this was a huge gap down. And now Snowflake reports earnings next week. It wouldn't be, surprise me if they have a massive beat. And, you know, maybe somebody pushed this down to try and shake out a lot of stops so that they could get the stock cheaper. Because look at how high off the lows it came. Traded all the way down to 248 and closed at almost 267 with huge volume. So, again, would not surprise me if Snowflake has a huge beat here and somebody maybe knows something a little bit in advance and uh, was basically just trying to stop loss hunt there. But regardless, you can see why we took this trade here. We had the volume in our favor. Uh, we had the inside bar, we had the, uh, the consolidation, nice consolidation to move higher. And um, so it was really a three-factor trade, but essentially that's what we're looking for uh, as far as the volume is concerned. Um, another example here we can use is the uh, SMH, and uh, we'll use the IGV too, because you can see both of them uh, really kind of traded in lockstep here. But so the SMH had a nice move up. You had the sell-off in uh, March little rally in April and then you trade it down in May and now look at the size of these candles here really big candles hit a little double bottom but look at the volume again huge volume increase again volume and increasing here at the 100 moving average as well in March that tells you that buyers stepped in and defended this level yes we were red we were red one you know two out of these three days but we still held up we held the 100 moving average Someone stepped in and bought this market. Again, same thing here in May. We had this sell. We had this fade lower, and then a little bit of a chop, and buyers stepped in as evidenced by the volume. Look at the volume here. You know, look how high it is. It's as high as it. It's this is higher than any uh, area on the chart. So that's telling you buyers are stepping in again. IGV. This is probably an even better example. Um, the IGV, look at those candles. So huge reversal candles, and the volume there is telling you that buyers are stepping in, shorts are covering, and you know the rally is a legit one. That's essentially what it's saying is that this is a legitimate rally, you know, one that you can uh, make a tradable bottom off of in the near future. Like this will be support when IGV comes down. Next time it comes down and has a correction, this will be an area of support that shorts will cover. And you can look to buy this area if we come into it correctly. So that's really the gist of that. Now we showed a few examples of uh, buying volume, but let's take a look at some sell volume. So we're going to take a look at NEO here. And NEO just had a massive run last year. Um, this is a absolutely crazy, crazy run here. Um, it's sympathy run off Tesla, really. But uh, if we look here, so you had a nice little grind up. And then you just started to kind of blow off here. I mean, you, you're in a kind of steady uptrend. And then you just went parabolic essentially. But notice the volume here, obviously, huge, huge red candle here um, and huge volume backing it up. Uh, geez, 500, almost 600 million shares on a stock this size is huge. Now, institutions can't sell all in one day, but they can sell a lot in one day. And that's why you saw the saw Neo uh, essentially make a secondary high. So this is very, this is very common We you see a distribution day. The stock will often make a secondary high a week or two after that, where the institution sells the rest of their share. So they're kind of, they unload a, a huge portion of it here. Then they kind of unload a little bit here, 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 and then unload the rest of it all at once there so that they're getting a better average and not, not basically crashing the stock all at once. But essentially you see that distribution, distribution, and then one more last gasp. And then even on this, on this green day, it gapped, they gapped it up and a little increase in volume, that's just telling you distribution. Look at the candle, opened high, closed lower. Even though you're still green on the day, there was distribution going on. And then the stock eventually you know, held up for a little bit and then faded down. And then look, we're here, right here. 
increase in volume, buyers stepped in at this trend line. So we had this trend line drawn in here, and that's where the buyers stepped in. And now it's chopped around for a while. You know, had a little bit of a rally, resistance at 54. And now, what is this telling you? This could be a tradable bottom, you know, depending on how it gets there, because this is where the institutional money is sitting. So that's what I mean when I say, you know, when we're talking about the market and, you know, when's the sell-off going to be? I, I don't know, but there has to be high volume behind it and there has to be follow through. So we've had, we've had these nice, uh, these nice reversals in the market, um, you know, lately, and they've been on good volume, but we've never gotten the follow through, but you know, we have to see a high volume reversal and we have to see it break trend. So it has to close below the 50 moving average and confirm and really the hundred moving average uh, at that. But aside from that, as far as volume is concerned, um, again, you just want to pay attention to it because it will tell you so much. It will tell you uh, if there's a fake breakout. It will tell you if there's a fake breakdown. It'll tell you where support is and where resistance is. And not enough traders are using it. And uh, I just see so many, so many people get caught up on Twitter and YouTube and that, oh, the, you know, SP did this today and that, and like that there there was like 35 million shares traded. The SP didn't do anything. Like just forget it. Like go out to the lake and you know have a beer. You're you're just wasting your time. All right. But anyways, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and I will see you next time.